The net payment cost index is a calculation of a life insurance cost per X dollars of face value based on the life coverage. So in this case, we, they will assume that the insured person will die at the end of a specified period, which uh, will be provided in the exam. So they will specify whether it's 20 years or 25 years. So to calculate the net payment cost index, uh, we will take the following steps. We will first calculate the future value of the premiums. And usually it's uh, based on the annuity deal, which means the first cash flow happens today. And then secondly, we'll calculate the future value of the dividends, uh, which is calculated based on the ordinary annuity. So it means that the first dividend will happen or will occur at the end of the year. And the dividends will be used to offset the premium. So once you offset, that will give us the insurance costs. So the insurance cost at the end of that period will then be converted back into an annuity amount. Okay, that is based on annuity due. So in other words, we are calculating the net premium. Okay, so by taking the premium net of the dividend. So lastly, we'll, config, uh, we'll convert the figure in step 4 uh, into the required face value. So sometimes in the exam, you may be given a face value of let's say 100,000 but the answer requires the face value to be in $1,000. Now let's look at this example where we have a $1 million face value whole life insurance policy with an annual premium of $22,000 that is paid at the beginning of the year. So the policy dividends is $4,500 per year and this is anticipated to be payable at year end. So let's assume the insured person will die at the end of year 20 and using a discount rate of 6%, calculate the net payment cost index per $1,000 face value. So let's look at the timeline. So we have uh, the premium, which is payable now immediately, okay, for 20 years. So that will go uh, happen until year 19. So there will be 20 payments altogether. And then the dividends will happen at year end. So we'll start from year 1 until year 20. So what we want to do now is we want to offset the premium against the dividends. Okay, but of course the timing of the cash flows are different. So we'll calculate the future value of all this premium and then we'll calculate the future value of all these dividends. Okay, until the end of year 20. So that will lead towards a single cash flow in the future for both the premium and the dividend. So we'll do this using the financial calculator. So for the first case, uh, for the premium, uh, the first cash flow happens today. So this is a annuity deal. So we'll use the BGN mode. So press second PMT. So that's uh, change to BGN and exit. So your PMT is 22,000. Okay, and N is equal to 20. And IY is 6. PV is 0. Then we compute the future value. So that's uh, 857,000. 839.987 okay so that let's write that down so this is 857 839.9869 okay then for the dividends let's calculate it as well the future value we will just change uh, the, the PMT to 4005 okay the rest is the same but we have to change the mode back to BGN so press second PMT change it back to END for ordinary annuity then uh, compute future value and we get 165,535.16. So let's write that down. So now we'll net the future value of the premium against the future value of the dividend. So that will give us 692,304.83. Then what we need to do now is to, based on this future value of the net premium, we will have to calculate what would the premium be now, okay, if the future value is equal to 692,000. So we have to calculate backwards, okay. So in other words, this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to calculate what would the premium be, okay, if, okay, we have this future value here. So using the financial calculator, what we'll do is uh, we'll take 692,304.83. And set this as the future value at year 20. So 20 is N, uh, 6 IY, and PMT is left uh, to the last part. PV is 0, 
and then we compute uh, PMT but before that remember this is an annuity deal so let's change this to BGN then compute your PMT so that's uh, 17,754.72 so this is the net premium per year that we'll expect okay uh, after netting off the premium against dividends now however this premium this annual premium here is for a face value of one million dollar so what we need to do is we have to convert it to a one thousand dollar face value so how do you go how do you convert from a one million to a one thousand face value so we'll take the net payment cost here which is seventeen point eight thousand and divide it by one million multiply by one thousand okay so it's a matter of scaling here and that will give us seventeen dollars and seventy five cents so this is the net payment cost index per $1,000 face value. In the exam, you will have to see what is the required face value and what is the face value based on the question. Sometimes it will be 100,000, sometimes it can be 500,000, and then you need to know what you are converting towards. So another method of calculating the net payment cost index is to calculate the PV of the dividend back to one period earlier. So this method was shared to me by my student and I was uh, and I thought of sharing it as well. Now, what we'll do is what we're trying to achieve here is to shift the dividends, okay, back uh, to one period earlier so that it coincides with all the premium payment so that we can offset it immediately. So how do we actually shift it, okay, from back one period everything to back one period earlier so we just have to discount the dividend by one plus the discount rate which is uh six percent so that will give us four thousand two hundred and forty five point two eight and now if i offset the premium against this pv of dividend that will give us seventeen thousand seven hundred and fifty four point seven two so that's exactly the same as what we did earlier Okay, so it's, it's another way of doing it, but it's different from what the textbook shows. But uh, if you can understand this method, it's of course faster to achieve or to arrive at the final answer. But don't forget to do the final scaling. So you will still need to divide by 1 million, which is the current face value, and then multiply it, scale it up by 1,000. So reaching $17.75.